with this weird Swedish lady always talking about her goddamn stones. Hey, hey. So first off, let me just say thank you so much for the good and positive and lovely reply to my first real episode. Like, it means the world to me. I am so happy and thrilled that you guys liked it. I hope you will like today's episode. It is uh, a bit different from the last one. In this episode, I am throwing in some conspiracy theories at you. Not real conspiracies, uh, but some theories I have. I'm not a person who can just go out to a site, look at a stone and then just, hmm, okay, and then go on to the next and do the same thing in the next and the next. Like I always think about these places and what they mean and what the story behind these places that means it is very exciting so today i am throwing in a couple of theories at you yeah let's get into it like i'm so excited um i put in so much work into this i put in so much thought into this yeah without further ado <gasps> have a great day and enjoy this episode and thank you so much again for the great responses i got to my first episode hey now <laughs> Today, I'm taking you to a location that is filled with distant whispers from the past, through stories being told about boat graves being found, and old Viking wars being fought. To these claims, I have no more evidence than stories that has been handed down to me by others. What I do have is yet another church location. And this time, the church building remains. This is the church of Kollands Osaka, just outside of a town called Lidköping. This church's oldest parts are from the 1200s, and it has been built on more during the 1400s. Its past is quite dramatic since there was a fire during the year 1755 that destroyed most of the church building. There was talk about tearing it down altogether. However, it wasn't and has been built on ever since. What's fantastic about this church's history Besides the obvious victorious tale of a beautiful piece of architecture still standing against the odds of time and fate, is what has been inside of it when all of this has been going on. A hidden away treasure that also stood against the ruthless test of time. It is now partly hidden behind this red bell tower made out of timber. There used to be another bell tower in its place, but it was replaced with this one during 1773 due to the old one not holding together anymore. It can be quite windy out here, so I'm not surprised. I know that you have already figured out what the hidden treasure I'm speaking of is. Of course, it is yet another runestone. This runestone dates back to around the year 1000 AD, long before the church you see here today was around. It is made out of gneiss and stands about 175 centimeters tall. It was rediscovered during 1874 within the church's wall and was raised anew in 1936. Imagine this stone, hearing all of the whispers from inside of that wall. All of the powerful singing, all of the confessions and all of the prayers, and all of the helpless shouts from when the church burned, and the voices of determination when it was given a second chance. As I have stated before, I will make a future episode on churches and their relationship to runestones. What I can tell you today is that this stone 
was probably located near or on a meeting site before it was taken to this church. Maybe the grounds of this church used to be that meeting place and maybe this stone isn't that far away from its original location. This is Erres stone. It's a breathtakingly beautiful stone depicting a man within the line of its runes. The runes are from the later Viking Age and they are very typical for the time around 900 up until 1100 AD. Let me read you the runes and show you how to read them before I tell you their story. It is more fun when we can do it together, don't you agree? So pick up your rune handbook and follow along. Thurthr Uk Thurun Thana Ristu Stin Efti Era Alkuthan Trik Tord and Turun raised this stone after Erre, a very honorable young man. Tord and Turun we can assume are husband and wife, but Erre doesn't seem to be related to them. Usually when someone honors another person through a rune stone, it is very important to distinguish the different relationships. So who was Erre to Tord and Torun? Was he a young man that worked for them? Someone they had more or less adopted? Was he someone they only knew and had respect for? But maybe someone whose family couldn't afford his honoring on their own? We will never know. If we look at the depiction on the stone, we see a man wearing a hat, a belt, a long tunic, and his hand seems incomplete. Above him is what seems to be a cross. We could assume that this depiction is of Erre himself. I, however, have another theory. And I will say again that this is only my theory. Do not take this as the written truth of history. But it's important that we can play around with the knowledge we do have to maybe reach new conclusions. So here it goes. First, I will need to speak a little bit about a character I think you all are familiar with the world creator Odin's and the goddess Jörd's son, Thor. Thor is the master of thunder and the mightiest of all of the Asir. He is Asgard's foremost protector. When Thor is riding his chariot drawn by his two goats, the sky fills up with lightning and thunder. His most famous weapon is the hammer in his hand, Mjölnir, which he swings fiercely and which returns to him whenever he throws it. His protective iron gloves makes him able to catch his weapon each time. He possesses a belt as well, a magical belt that makes him so much stronger than he already is. This belt is called Megingjörd. Thor was the common people's god and the most popular god amongst humans in all of Midgard. He is not only the protector of Asgard, but also men. So, why am I suddenly talking about Thor? 
Maybe I wouldn't if I hadn't been out looking at Peter's stone recently, or if I hadn't looked at so many other rune stones before and after the first time I saw this one. It makes me think about another rune stone, which stands in a place called Shelby Hallar. And it is one of two big runestones that I'm thinking about in particular. This is the stone. It is made around the same time as Erre's stone is. And it is said to depict the god Thor. This stone is also said to have been moved here by 20 oxes, by the way on orders by the noble Mag Magnus Gabriel de la Gardi during the 1600. He is a very important person in Swedish history, who was born in Reval, now named Tallinn, in Estonia, where his father was a governor. But that's enough of the medieval times for now. Let's get back to the lovely rune stones of Sweden. As we can see, they are both wearing the same type of belt. It is possible that neither of these depictions are Thor, and that this isn't his belt. But it might also be that both of them are in fact depicting the famous god of mankind and thunder. When I look at these two stones I can't help but to see the similarities. Since both of their hands are also missing to an extent. It is believed that this character was holding a hammer, but the hand has now fallen off. And on Erre's stone, I can't help but to notice that there is in fact some type of shape around where his hand is supposed to be. It almost looks like he's holding on to something. It might be my eyes fooling me, but I can see a shape. My mind also goes to the necklace around my neck as I'm talking about all of this. This is what is believed to be yet another depiction of the god Thor. My necklace is a miniature of this statue, which was found at the Eireland farm on Iceland. This statue can today be found at the National Museum of Iceland. The statue was created around the same point in time as Erre's stone was carved, as well as the stone found in Shelby Hallar. If we look at this statue and Erre's stone, there is kind of a similarity. Maybe it's just the fashion of the pointy hat that does it. Somehow I can't help but wonder. Since all of these different depictions are quite similar and are all in fact created around the same time. And what about this cross above the man's head? Either it really is a cross, a lot of runestones have them. But if we go back just a little bit in time and look at Peter's stone, it isn't blatantly obvious that this isn't a cross, but is in fact a Taurus hammer. This is definitely a cross I saw on a stone recently, but the one on Erre's stone could also be seen as a variation of Thor's hammer Mjölnir, together with all of these other factors that I have talked about. However, all of these things can and cannot be true. We can't be certain. That is one of the big factors to why these stones are so mysterious and haunting. We can only speculate. Whatever the case might be with this statue, the stone at Shelby Hallar, Peter's stone, one thing is certain. Erre Whomever Tord and Torun was to you, you made a huge impact in their lives, and something tells me that they held you very close to their hearts. Thanks to them, 
we will always remember you. And maybe you, in return, have given us a piece of this ancient puzzle we are trying to solve and to find answers to. Thank you, Erre. I am honored to be in the presence of your memory. I would like to thank everyone who has watched this episode. If you have a theory of your own, please feel free to comment. So, it is that time now, guys. What did the stone say to the moose? That it doesn't matter how deep you dig into history, you will never find all of the answers. But somehow you will always end up in Estonia when it comes to Swedish history, no matter the subject you are researching. <laughs> and that is just fact. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>